a comprehensive plan. And that's the end of my lecture. <laughs> Everybody needs to stand up and uh, sort of get the blood flowing in. <laughs> anyway, um, this must be especially slow on television, Mike. <laughs> slow enough to uh, live. Um, I, I guess I. I <laughs> this is the guy that likes HHG 200 for me. <laughs> I study those at home, though. You know. I thought I, I just stepped down through some of these and trying to say with the global issues that you've touched and so forth that some things that you've done that I see that are, are, are drastic improvements. Um, I just briefly would echo Tom's comments um, regarding the, the term of cynical planning or, or whatever the, the, the full the cynical versus good faith and it's something with with um, I wouldn't say we've tortured ourselves with but it's been a dilemma for a long time dealing with the, the um, the nature of uh, most of the land here in, in Cape Elizabeth and the realities of our zor uh, zoning ordinance um, and how much as planners we can do to make drastic changes to that uh, and what is the reality of, of wetlands and ledge outcroppings. I, I think just briefly if the applicant could uh, respond to the issue of um, the Lyman Tunbridge uh, rock outcropping percentage and so forth, and, and I mean that, if that was a legitimate point, you know, and, and we've dealt with that issue before. What's a re reliable or, or or reasonable criteria by which you say that 10 percent? You know, one person who is a very uh, um, knowledgeable person says 10 percent of that that can be attributed to uh, uh, ledge at or within six inches of service. That being so, uh, I just a response to, to say this is how we start differently. Um, I guess what you've done with the, with the public space so far is, is uh, um, a drastic improvement. I, I like the change uh, at Alicia Circle. Um, I would just ask the, the applicant not to be afraid of, of creating structures. You just mentioned briefly, you know, a gazebo or a bandstand or something that visually brings that there. Not to don't be afraid to, to make those improvements in, in the whole whole scheme of, of the land development modeling. It, it, it uh, may feel like a few dollars now, but it's, it's minor compared to um, the, the overall scheme that you're looking at. Um, if there's an issue with this, this eyebrow at the, the phase three, I think it is, uh, the furthest west, uh, which seems to be expanding a little bit, if there's any way to, to continue to expand. I can't remember why um, to the south of those four homes here, why they can't drop down. What's that? Wetlands? Okay. Um, we'll do the best we can. I mean, that's an improvement over what was there before. I'm not familiar with the topography, so how usable it is, whether it's flat, or whether it's truly a gathering place. Uh, the loop um, to the north side of that is, is, uh, uh, is beneficial. I would just also ask the applicant if, if uh, you're proposing five foot sidewalks now, to look into um, the bituminous sidewalks, which um, from an upkeep one perspective of upkeep is, is, is very good. Uh, another side is the, the nature of bituminous surface without heavy weight on it. The kneading action of, of heavy weight doesn't last very long. Just look into um, another surface treatment that may be more economical, but packs as well. I would try to stay away from stone dust um, in that it, it, that it doesn't work exceptionally well. You may want to check with, with, with uh, public works. Maybe there's not an acceptable uh, I bring that up because I'm a, a committee member, and I won't deviate too much here, but the, um, the offer to the town and not offered to, to contractors in general through, I think it's SD Warren, as a biomass a residual that is, is being tested environmentally right now for that very purpose, bike paths and walking paths that um, they're offering to donate to the city of Portland and to Cape Elizabeth. I don't think they will donate it to a developer, but it may be more economical. Long story made short, if there's a more economical surface that is acceptable, would you be willing to widen that to a seven to eight foot wide path, better accommodate both bicycles and, and uh, uh, pedestrians? Just a, just a comment. 
Um, I just want to make sure that, that the applicant understands um, the, the comments that I've seen. I haven't seen you respond as such to the, the full reclamation of Wells Road subsequent to um, sewer placement and incorporating um, a bike lane, a shared bike lane, in the reconfiguration or maybe the adjustment of center line of that road. Um, question dealing with uh, your progress on the community impact report. Um, that I haven't seen anything there. Um, and I think it is something I don't want to delay far into the process because uh, it keeps popping up. I've considered it to be a serious uh, or a key issue. I, I mentioned it in one of the first uh, uh, workshops um, and would like to see that uh, as soon as possible. Um, question uh, dealing with the recording of the joint venture um, agreement. Uh, between Lonis and Nassus. I don't, I'm not sure whether that's a recorded document or not. My, my interest, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a recorded in, uh, document, not always is, but my question is through the planner. If there's a way, there's, if there's a mechanism that uh, joint ventures can fairly easily be uh, dissolved and, and that the, the town is notified of any dissolution of, um, of that joint venture agreement, um, some mechanical operational way, that, that, that's a key piece. Um, to keep the integrity of the, uh, the technical capability. Um, I, somewhere in this pile of paper, I saw the, the suggestion that you may be redoing the phasing plan, just a substantiation of what that, that's a key piece when you break it down. To, uh, I think it's at the number five. Um, that, that becomes a key concern. Um, I think I've mentioned before uh, the uh, dealing with the affordable housing. I, saw, I heard that mentioned uh, in the public hearing. Um, that all along I'd like to see the mathematics behind how you qualify in dollar bills uh, the dollar level and value of those homes. I know the whole issue of perpetual affordability is a, is a whole other issue, but just based on the, the criteria in our ordinance, if you can set that for the mathematics. Um, question that I have in, in it. Uh, I just have the last names, Mugar and Clemens or Clements. Uh, appears to be a turnaround here that is um, uh, an encumbrance on one of the, the boundaries. Is that the former Gabriel property? I think we did the public access way within the last two years. Can we check the documentation as to the placement of that turnaround? It's, it's uh -huh. correctly placed. It was a, a lease. What was given to the, it was a public access waiver request and the turnaround was proposed and it was shown on the abutting property owner's property with a lease agreement. So it was never a permanent agreement. Yeah. We learn all the time. Hmm. Well, you mentioned the, the, the short path uh, off Alicia Circle down in crossing Wells Road. I think that's a, that's a nice uh, addition. You might just check with the Conservation Commission as to what they feel is an appropriate surface. You mentioned wood chip or gravel. We might just check with them what, uh, in their involvement in Greenbelt, what's an appropriate surface treatment. Um, also, if we can start right out early in the process knowing the total number of lots that you're going to be requesting uh, public access waivers. Um, there appear to be several that don't have appropriate uh, frontage. I can't remember the numbers now. Hello? Yes. Through the chair. Through the chair. If it's a clustered development, the dimensional requirements are waived, so they don't gotcha. have to meet the 200 foot per lot frontage requirement. I, I guess the issue that will come up is the discussion surrounding, oh, I've lost the numbers now, but the, the lots, I think, in the upper 40s, um, mm -hmm. where due to CMP's comment, you changed the configuration of the road, uh, you've, got, you've added like 150 feet to the, to the access of one of those lots. I'm sure it will be a discussion issue. To the end. Mr. Carlson? Yes, I have excuse me, some question about the phasing. And I'm not a marketing person and I'm not a developer. But I wonder, the impact on Wells Road is going to be pretty hard in the beginning of this project. And if somehow the Sawyer Road entrance and the Wells Road entrance could somehow be tied together, that would I'm also concerned about if phase one gets done and phase two sits and sits and sits. We have one entrance to quite a large development. 
looking at Sawyer Road entrance there, there's a cluster of housing that's really quite close to the uh, to Sawyer Road and might provide uh, good marketing to do that particular area and also at the same time doing Wells Road. I'm just suggesting that uh, some of what I'm hearing tonight is this on the entrance at Wells Road, all these trucks going through, uh, this might alleviate that a little bit. Now, whether that can be done, if it's economical to do, I really don't know, but something maybe you might think about. Thank you. I'm not sure I need to edit. I think I have said it before. I still am concerned about the location of the entrance on Wells Road, but I know I have brought that concern up before, so I'm sure we'll be looking at that in the general scheme of things. I, I think another way of, of, of asking Roy's question is at what point uh, does the development in any phase exceed the dead end road uh, standards? That's correct. I'll just jump in here for a second. Um, I have just have a couple small things. Um, I'm troubled by the, the duplex building buildings. Um, it seems to me, from a human relations point of view, I think it's going to be a tough um, thing or tough buildings for those people to live in, given the um, surrounding neighborhood is predominantly single family. I don't know. I don't think there's anything you can possibly do to make a duplex look like anything else except for a duplex, no matter how well designed it is. Um, I'm also some kind of concerned about the density, um, but it's something I'll just sort of go with as the application goes along. Um, the community impact analysis, do you any year when that may be forthcoming? We have a next meeting with you, I believe, April 2nd. Um, I talked with Maureen today, and uh, we'll be meeting with her in the next couple of days to review models that she has collected on similar analyses. Um, we, we heard a lot of comments last time about what was missing, and I'm getting a sense of what the sort of additional data and numbers should be in that, uh, that report. And if anybody had, could enlighten us any further tonight, that might be very helpful in terms of making sure that we're focusing in on the issues that, that need to be raised. Does anyone have any, while we're on this subject, does anyone have anything they want to see included in that? There, there are two issues here. Number one, I, and, and I read about the, the, the assistance that our staff was giving the applicant regarding this, and, and to certainly uh, we, that is the role of our staff. Um, but I also sort of, both as a planning board member as a taxpayer, I don't think it's uh, the role of the staff to provide you as the applicant with something that, uh, free of charge, something of the impact study assistance um, that, that is, is your responsibility. I, I would just point to, and Mar uh, Maureen was, uh, gave me a call after the last meeting, if I have impact studies in, in my files and I don't, um, probably read 300 impact studies in the last 20 years, uh, 15 years. Um, the, the last one I saw, which I didn't necessarily agree with, but it was reasonable in form, was the uh, impact study done for um, First Atlantic's uh, Congregate Care, I believe, did a, a community impact. Uh, there's more of a feasibility study, but it did have a, uh, some community impact in there. So you might use that for um, sort of a model. The demographic information, I just ordered some today for a, uh, a large retail facility here in southern Maine. It's uh, very inexpensive. Uh, it'll give you 20 pages of more data than you can ever find in this town uh, through the demographic uh, um, providers. Uh, and it's simply a particularly appropriate application of that as, as it impacts the community. else to add to that before we go on. 
Anyone else have anything that would like to add on the just general comments? I don't think I answered your question. We hope to have the majority of this information when we come back before you uh, on, on April 2nd. I'm not, I can't guarantee you even that we'll have the entire impact assessment completed to your satisfaction, though. We will make a, a good faith attempt, though. I'm not, I'm not sure I made this point, and uh, since I was so long-winded, I, I might as well fill up the entire balloon. <laughs> uh, the uh, question was asked about density, and I, I wish that uh, I and, and uh, Jim Smith and Joe Bloke could go out and develop a five-lot subdivision today and do it successfully. Uh, the, the reality of the fact is that somewhere between land costs, particularly in Cape Elizabeth, uh, I'm not going to blame anything on regulations because they ride with the land and they're a known entity typically uh, when people get involved in land. But the reality is that it takes uh, a number of investors, it takes a considerable effort as realized through this document in terms of just getting standing before a planning board. Uh, this essentially is just permission to come up and make a presentation to the planning board so we can get into serious uh, discussions and everyone's protected under the law. Um, and with that, uh, of course, comes the cost of in infrastructure. Uh, this development is proposed to be clustered uh, in hoping to save some of those costs, but nevertheless, there's a considerable infrastructure. Uh, the, re the, I think, agreed approach to use public sewer here, which is an expensive uh, situation, commissions to the consultants, fees, and the multi-layered development team, including the developer and his partners, all of which uh, respect the return. So out of this, I think it's, it's only uh, reasonable to expect that um, when the town designates a growth area and, and has a cluster provision and also has a minimum lot size of two acres, it can be reduced down in, in uh, size but not in overall density except for uh, um, affordable housing, that, that uh, it's not unexpected to see higher densities than we're uh, typically comfortable with uh, in this part of town. I think it would be helpful for the board and, and to the public, uh, and I'm addressing most of these comments not to the applicant but to the public comments, that we could compare or have other plans that would compare typical developments within the, the same densities that are allowed in this, in this uh, uh, zone and for the site so that we can hang one to the next and uh, generally see what the, uh, the comparison of density is. Uh, so that people have a, 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 a better understanding of what it is our comprehensive plan uh, affords in terms of overall development of the community and what this applicant is, is here to do. Any other comments? Um, this will be, the, I guess, the last meeting that we'll be actually advertising. Um, the meetings for this project, but the meetings will continue, and the public is obviously invited to come and participate, or not participate, but excuse me, to come listen and keep keep up with the meetings, and also the workshop meetings are open to the public. Um, we don't allow any comment, but we are, you're allowed to come and just get information. And we'll always accept written comments. Written comments are allowed to be submitted to the town planner. I have a pr procedural question. Is it uh, if there were major changes to this development because of density or something else? Um, I know that we're required to hold a public hearing, but it would, it would, would it be unreasonable to expect it in, in light of a major change to the plan that another public hearing would be advertised? I mean, that's always a decision the board can assume. In, in the past, the board has, in, under certain circumstances, uh, held a second public hearing. I, I believe it's always been with the consent of the applicant. Um, this project, if it receives preliminary approval, would proceed forward to final approval, at which time the board has the option of holding a public hearing. So there's, there's, a, there's a concrete opportunity to hold at least one more public hearing in this process. And I think the board has the option, and they usually exercise it when they felt necessary, to hold more than one public hearing. <clears throat> Thank you. Mr. Chair, I, I'd just like to comment on the, on the public comment tonight. And I, you know, it's always encouraging, you know, for a lot of years sitting on the, the planning board that we actually do get comment from the public. And, and 
Uh, I know it's not always easy to, for some reason, even when I get behind that podium, I get nervous, more nervous than I did up here for some reason, but it's well worth your time. Um, the, the process is that typically going forward, unless we hold another public hearing, um, that we accept just written comments, but please feel free to, to submit that. It, it keeps a, um, a sense of good communication between the public and, and this board that's uh, uh, very important to us to understand <laughs> what you're feeling, what you're thinking about. It uh, gives us a different perspective. And I appreciate the comments tonight very much. I do too, and I guess, Mr. Chair, along that line, one of the uh, participants tonight suggested that we might want to do another site walk, and I was just curious about what the board members thought about that. Just my own personal comment would be when, when we feel that, that uh, uh, center lines of roads are, are pretty close to where they're going to finally be, you know, we don't sense any more changes, uh, and one side of black fly season or the other, <laughs> uh, I'd love to go back out. <laughs> I agree. I'm not sure now is the time to do it, but uh, a little, it's a little too far this side. Yeah. <laughs> I would just uh, add to that that uh, I, I think certainly uh, if the issue of that des uh, residential density in area is uh, at question, that that should be resolved before we venture out and, and take a look at the plan. Again, I, I, I feedback is a big part of this process, and yet we're so well into the process now that it's, I think, the term micromanaging the design came up earlier, and that's certainly not what this planning board wants to do. Uh, but I think it's also important that the planning board has concerns that we get those in, in, into the process uh, in time so that the applicant uh, has the flexibility and, and uh, wherewithal to, uh, to abide by not only our concerns but the neighbor's concerns and the public in general. Um, and I don't know if when the roads are finally tied down and designed, that's it, or when they're sort of in a preliminary final. I think after our next sort of uh, uh, workshop and, and next public meeting, that may be at the point. Any other comments? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> it was uh, mentioned during the public meeting this evening about another site walk. I don't know whether the timing is right now or maybe after the next monthly meeting, but it might be important to think about having that site walk again. And also, as far as the public participation here this evening, uh, it's been so it's been presented well in a nice tone, which we as board members appreciate. Quite often there is a lot of flaring of the arms and tempers flare, but uh, I'm really quite pleased to be up here in the way these comments were presented to us this evening. I thank you. Is the time, time right for a motion to be heard? On. One last comment. Um, when we talked with Maureen uh, several weeks ago, we, it was our understanding that the April 2nd meeting was going to be reserved for discussing uh, the comments that you received tonight. And I certainly intend to go ahead and uh, give you further data as required. But uh, I think each one of you has had some very pointed and well thought out comments, which we will attempt to address at the April 2nd meeting, time permitting. Uh, I guess we would also like to talk about how we're going to intend to review the rest of the project. I know that's a theme that we've been harping on, but uh, we would like to know at what point we should be thinking about bringing in wetlands people or traffic people if those people are required to appear before the board. Yeah, I think that the workshop's an appropriate place to take, and I can't dig it back up real quickly, your outline or of, of one outline of, of how we proceed and just make sure that we say, oh, okay, at the next workshop, this is what we're going to hit in the next month, and, and it helps us as, a, as well as uh, helps you to concentrate our studies uh, on those. And I think next workshop would be a good time to just say, okay, that's it for, for the next month. Okay. Mr. Chair, I have a motion. Please do. 
for the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of the Dominicus Crossing Limited Liability Company for preliminary subdivision review and a wetlands alteration permit for Dominicus Crossing, a 97-plus lot subdivision located off Wells Road and Sawyer Road, be tabled with the, consent of, with the request of the applicant to the regular April 16, 1996 meeting of the Planning Board. Second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Unanimous. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, we will. 